This week on El Cara Ham Radio, we're going to take a look at a new compact tenna. This is the 2 meter 440 plus 9 inch model. These are very small compact antennas. This utilizes an NMO mount and we're going to take it and check the SWR and utilize it here in southeastern Kentucky. This week on El Cara Ham Radio. Alrighty, so what do we have this time from Compact Tenna? Well, Dr. Jack Nielsen sent us a review unit here of the new 9 inch 2 meter 440 plus. This is a different antenna than the other 9 inch. The other 9 inch can do 2 meters, although it's a little bit tricky, but it can also do up in the GMRS band and 900 megahertz. So it's really a business band or a governmental use antenna, the 9 inch that we did before, which was called the LMR-1. This is the 2 meter 440 plus, so it's specifically tuned for your ham radio bands. And you've got your cellophane bag, again with the informational sheet, the little baggie on the inside with your silicon grease and a rubber gasket, and the antenna itself. So let's take it out of the bag and Let's talk a little bit about this antenna. So we've got our information sheet, our baggie with the silicon grease and gasket, and the antenna. We'll move that plastic out of the way. I've always liked the look of these antennas. They're small, they're just little canisters it looks like. You can kind of imagine what must be in there as far as engineering, but these wear really well. I've been using a seven and a half inch model for a while. This one is supposed to have a uh, 1.5 dB gain compared to the seven and a half inch model. And if we look at the sheet, we're looking at about 100 watts of duty cycle uh, for two meters and or maximum power rating and 75 watts for 440. Uh, we should be under two SWR with no problem in most situations with your vehicle. Now this is going to be a magnetic mount as we've seen with some of the other antennas, but if this is your first time with Compact Tenna in one of our videos, this is an NMO mount and we're going to use a magnetic base that will go on the steel of your vehicle. Now it likes the corners, not the middle of your roof, not the middle of your hood uh, or your bonnet as they like to say in the UK, but actually in the corner of your hood or the corner of your roof, which on my Ford F-150 is easy to do. So that is some of the information that came with the product. It also shows you uh, that you could utilize this in some other situations. You can use it as a base station, for instance, antenna, instead of using it on your vehicle if you don't want to use it that way. Now on the inside, we have our baggie with the silicon grease. And what this does is it allows us to mount it to a magnetic base and with the silicon grease, uh, right there, you can see we've got some super lube. We are going to actually put this on the uh, rubber seal, the gasket here, and then we'll put this on the NMO magnetic base, and then we'll screw the compact tenna onto that base. It's a very easy install. What's interesting and what can be somewhat tricky is finding the place on your vehicle where you're going to get the best SWR and as well as propagation, which we'll show you once we get outside. So let's go ahead and mount it on the base and we'll be back in the next segment. And we're back. So what we're gonna do is we're going to screw the compact tenna onto a magnetic base uh, based on its NMO mount. And what I have here is the same NMO mount that I use for the seven and a half inch. Now this particular magnetic mount I bought off of Amazon. It was literally the cheapest one I could find uh, Dr. Jack Nielsen does recommend a Hustler brand if you're really looking probably to get the mount that he's tested with and will probably give you the fewest uh, problems. But this particular mount did in fact work. So I'm going to continue to use it. We're going to check the SWR in a future segment here in just a few minutes. Now, how do we go about mounting this antenna? Well, the first thing we have to do is take this rubber gasket right here so you can see Mr. Rubber Gasket, and this is sent with the kit, and we have some silicon grease here. I'm going to go ahead and tear off the tab, and we'll move this paper towel over here. And what we want is to get a little bit of grease out here, 
and we want to put grease on this rubber seal. So I'm going to put a little bit on my finger and we're also going to put some of that rubber grease on the threads of the NMO mount of the magnetic base itself. So we're going to go ahead and just lather this up a little bit with some uh, silicon grease and we're going to go ahead and mount this down here on the NMO mount. Now what you don't want to do is get some of this grease on the center contact. They don't recommend that at all but we'll go ahead and just kind of go around the edges here just like that. Clean up our fingers just a little bit a little bit around the edges here and for that part we're good. Now we're going to take the rest or some of the rest of our grease and let's go ahead and push some out and we're going to put it along the threads of the base and what this does is again it'll give us a better seal against water intrusion uh, on the the base and then adverse weather and when the rain's coming in sideways you want to have as much protection as possible i don't know that you can have too much of this grease but i think we got a pretty good amount there so we'll put that over here wash or clean off our fingers now the way this is going to go on is you're going to press down and you're going to screw it. Now you want to be careful that you don't in any way screw this on uh, where you're cross threading, but it does require you to press down a little bit to get it started. And then once you get it started, you can just use your hands and just hand tighten it. You don't have to go much tighter. In fact, what I check for, we want to see, in fact, this is probably a little too tight. You want to see the gasket just squirting out just a little bit and a little bit of that grease if at all possible let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit and uh, she is mounted and so now we're ready to go out to the truck and try to find a location on the roof of the f ford f-150 now as these newer vehicles are coming out at, with aluminum bodies and so forth you may have to go a different route um, for instance you may have to use an nmo mount that mounts to your window or to um, a rain uh, guard or something like that on your vehicle uh, so that's something to consider is it does need something magnetic to go onto, and preferably a corner uh, of uh, your hood or your roof. So in the next segment, we're going to take this out to the truck and we're going to check the SWR in various locations, just like we have with some of the other antennas, to show you that this one is a little bit different. The 2 meter 440 plus from Compact Tenna. See you in the next segment. Alrighty, so I always like to start in the middle of the roof of my truck just to show you that this antenna does, re does not really like to be in locations where you might have put other antennas. So let's come down to the MFJ and let's see what we've got. Uh, 2.5, I mean, it's not less than 2 to 1 in that middle position. But, uh, you know, it's not horrible, but it's, it's not great either. So we can see that that middle position isn't going to work for us. Now let's switch to... UHF and our repeaters at 443 600 so let's see uh, you can see it's pretty low uh, even in this middle position for 70 centimeters I'm gonna get close but it's very delicate there we go that's still not 600 but hey you get the idea it's not gonna change a whole lot for that little bit but 1.5 it would work in the middle for 70 centimeters but uh, I bet it would work even better hopefully in the corner so let's put it in one more location when we come back and let's see if it would work there alrighty so this time I put it right on top of that rear backup or tail light if you will and uh, but it's still basically in the middle it's not near the corner it's just right above that center mounted light so let's take a look at the MFJ now and let's see what we get and sure enough you know it's not bad it's two I mean I can almost work with that but let's come down to our repeater frequency that's really close there still two so it's still not where I would like it to be for the main two meter repeater now if we go to UHF let's see what 443 600 comes in at we're pretty low there on the band I bet you it's still gonna be usable That's almost right on top of our frequency. So that's 1.5. That's not bad. I mean, it's usable in that location, but it isn't as good as it could be for two meters. So let's do our two meter check and that corner position that they recommend. And let's see if we can get both of these below too. So I'll be right back. Alrighty, so now we're on the back left corner or the passenger back corner. And let's come on over to the analyzer and sure enough 1.7 now 
my little analyzer is uh, usually very accurate. Uh, I've been pretty pleased with the MFJ, so I would think that I would probably get something similar for uh, a, a different analyzer. I don't have a Nano handy. Now let's move it to VHF and let's see what happens on UHF, excuse me. And again, our repeater's at uh, 443, 600. So let's bounce it down just a little bit. About right there, a little less than that. But coming in at 1.5, and I think on VHF we were 1.7, 1.8. So that's usable. Anything under 2 will get you where you need to be. And that's the thing with this particular antenna. It's really, shall we say, sensitive to where it is placed. And you may have to play with it a little bit, and I'm not going to promise you it will work on every vehicle. Uh, it uh, works on my truck, both the 7.5 and, and the 9-inch. And uh, if you're expecting one... Uh, 10 or 1.1, which I have gotten with other antennas from Compact Tenno. Uh, the uh, the 20 meter, for instance, I was able to get quite low. Um, but 1.5 I could live with on 70 centimeters. And if we go back to VHF and uh, 1.7, I think it was 1.8, somewhere in that ballpark. Yeah, we're a little high there, but let's tune it down just a smidge. One point. 146.9, we're going to come in at 8,800, so that may drift a little bit downwards. But 1.7, I, I can live with that, no problem. So as you can see, uh, Corners loves the Corners, does not like it anywhere else. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is we're going to take it out on the road. We're going to go to my favorite spot, and we're going to get a check-in with uh, hopefully somebody listening to the repeater. Elsewise, we'll uh, listen to the repeater ID itself. And we'll get an idea of signal strength from my position about 20 plus miles away. I think it's close to 25 miles away. And uh, we'll compare that with some of the other tests that I've run with other antennas. So I'll see you back here in the next segment as we hit a repeater out in the field. Alrighty, now we're at my favorite location here in Mount Victory, which uh, my alias is uh, White Lily, which is actually a little bit closer into town. But this is actually Mount Victory. I'll put up a map similar to what we've done in some of the other videos to give you an idea of how far I am from the actual repeater itself. I've been watching the APRS beacon. Of course, I'm down in some valleys and, and whatnot, and so it doesn't make it out as well. But usually up on this knob, the APRS really starts hammering nicely. And you can see I'm going full scale on those receives. So I've got a really good feeling on the, uh, on the regular repeater there on the top 146.880, the APRS is down at the bottom. So I'll show an APRS map towards the end as a summary, but let's uh, reach out to the repeater and let's see if somebody will give us a signal report. And let's also keep an eye on the signal strength coming back. Uh, and then I'll throw up some, uh, some stills of the uh, seven and a half inch antenna from Compact Tenna, as well as some of the others to compare it with. KY4 BDP mobile for an antenna check. Full scale on the way back on that uh, tail. Let's see if somebody's KY4 listening. MFJ, reading loud and clear. KJ4 MFJ, I'm out your way, my friend. Just sitting here at the intersection of uh, 192 and 1003. Not sure how far I am from you physically, but uh, you're getting into the repeater well, and it uh, looks like I'm just about full scale on the return. Awesome. Yep, I'm on a crossband repeat on a Yazoo 400, just using a um, cheap half watt handheld, and uh, just finished up some rural harvesting. Well, awesome. I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. Uh, full scale. Now, with the 7.5 inch compact antenna, I was uh, one uh, or two below full scale on the receive. Today, I'm uh, totally full scale with the 9 inch version of the compact antenna. This is the 2 meter 440 plus that we're doing a video on. So, uh, you, you're sounding good. Uh, I think you're utilizing a portable, but uh, or you said an FTM 400 as well. That's what I'm using here in the, in the truck. And uh, hopefully everything sounds uh, just fine. with a uh, Redivis half watt. Um, just say I keep a bunch of them around just to use them across the band repeat. They work great in the neighborhood. So 
um, yeah, KG4 MFJ, uh, keep on reaching out. Yeah, KG4 MFJ, uh, keep on reaching out. Righto. Well, thanks so much for coming back, and uh, we'll go ahead and finish up the video on my side. And it was good talking to you, KJ4MFJ, and a new member here at the club. Have a great evening in 73. Alrighty, so I'm even more impressed with this version. This nine and uh, this nine inch version is seems a little more sensitive compared to the seven and a half and some of the other antennas we've compared it with sitting at this location. And uh, again, it's it's not a scientific uh, test per se, but when you can compare it against three or four other antennas, you can get a pretty good feel for what. Uh, what uh, your uh, your sensitivity is going to look like and full scale today uh, makes me a, uh, a convert to this antenna. I like the seven and a half because it has an even lower profile, but add an inch and a half that uh, one and a half dB gain and uh, I can tell a difference. Let's head back to the Hacienda and let's uh, do a summary and wrap up on this antenna. See you in the next segment. So what do I think of the Compact Tenna 2 meter 440 plus? Well, I like this antenna. Yes, it's one and a half inches taller than the seven and a half inch model that I've been using and purchased with my own money, but it does seem to be a little more sensitive and I'm sure the engineering allows it to be so, about one and a half dB in the documentation. And if we look at the APRS map, even though I am traveling up and down, up and down within valleys and hollers here in southeastern Kentucky, you can see that it was able to reach out pretty well from the 26-mile location as well as coming back into town and then back to the compound. And so pretty happy with that. I'd like to drive it around the lake just to get an idea of how it does there. Now, comparing it to some of the other antennas that we've tested from the same 26-mile location, this is the stubby antenna, which is about 10 inches tall. And you can see we only get one red segment here. And as we move to the Comet antenna, at least on the day that I tested it, same location, it was just to the border of the white and the red section, no red at all in this particular case. And as we compare it to the 7.5-inch model of the compact antenna, again, no red segments, uh, were seen from that 26 mile uh, distance location. But Mr. 9 inch model, full scale on the receive, both uh, the tail squelches we were getting back from the repeater and from KJ4 MFJ. So uh, I could tell a uh, little bit better sensitivity. The noise floor was lower uh, and uh, the, uh, the clarity of his signal coming back to me was quite good. So how much does an antenna like this go for with all the engineering and so forth? Thousands of dollars? No. Hundreds of dollars? No. As best as I can tell, it will probably sell for about $119, somewhere in that ballpark and uh, on various sites. Uh, you'll probably have to search for it as to your favorite site to purchase it from. I believe it's pending on DX Engineering, so you should be able to get it there. Would I recommend it? Yes, I would. But you do have to be uh, aware that it is sensitive to where it is placed on your vehicle. It has to be steel or you're going to have to use some type of an NMO mount on your door uh, in the corner of your vehicle to get the best behavior and the best performance. I've been using the 7.5 inch model for about 4 or 5 months, really pleased with it. Several members of our club have also been pretty impressed with this uh, with the seven and a half inch model, I can only imagine the nine inch model is going to do a little bit better based on those sensitivity readings that we saw. For the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, I'm KY4BDP. Hope you like these antenna based videos. Give us a thumbs up and some comments and subscribe to the channel. Take care, everybody. 73.